Hey everybody, Jamich here, and I wanted to do a tutorial video on Nintendo World Championship because I'm trying to nag some people into actually starting to run the game. So this is going to be for the any percent 25 lines Tetris category. If you're going for score, you're going to want to use default dip switches, but for the speed run, it doesn't matter which dip switches you use because it doesn't change anything we care about. It just changes when the game times out. So if you want to practice on maximum time dip switches, that's not a problem, but obviously to challenge the record, you'll need to be going faster than that. The uh, run is all three games in Nintendo World Championship, so that's get 50 coins in Mario 1, a special Rad Racer course, and then get 25 lines in Tetris as fast as possible. If if you're playing for score, you want to get to Tetris as fast as you can and then score as many points in Tetris because the multiplier in Tetris is just huge. If you're playing for time, the optimizations don't really change. So when you actually go to start the game, you're going to need a second player controller to start the game because that way all the judges in the real competition can start everyone at the same time. Since I'm playing on emulator, I typically just hit start. Uh, it's just map start on my controller to be player two controller. But uh, if you got real hardware, it might be a little annoying. And then you're going to sit through about well, 13 seconds of get ready. And then you're going to go into Mario. As a reminder, the goal in Mario is to get 50 coins. You're going to do that exact sequence of three jumps to get over the Goomba and get those two coins. The score you get in Mario is going to determine what your RNG is in Tetris, or it's not really RNG, it's really fixed. Um, and I'm playing for a, a 10,400 point route, which means 10,000 points from 50 coins and 400 points from stomping on four enemies, probably Goombas. I'm using what I think is probably the simplest and most consistent route in this video. There are probably ways to do it faster. But we're going to pick up one of our 100 Goomba points there by just falling off that pipe. And then when you hit the ground, you back off the gas a little bit. And then that lets you jump up into the coin pipe. The other way you can approach this is you can make a large leap from one pipe earlier, fly over the middle pipe, and land on the Goomba in one fell swoop. That might be a little more consistent in getting up to the pipe because you're on the ground sooner. It does take a little practice to be able to land on that Goomba and then get up into the pipe because you you have to actually back off the run just a little bit there. So that's one of our four stomps and we definitely want to do this with 385 on the clock. And when we go in the pipe, we need to get all these coins and we need to do it as cleanly as possible. So you're going to try to do it in three hops and you're going to try to keep those hops as short as possible. So one, two, and three. And ideally, you don't land on the bricks. Ideally, you should be able to get that third coin and not land on the bricks and fall all the way down and go in the pipe. We don't end up doing that in this run. We still make 376 on the clock, which is a sign that we're probably in good shape, although it is definitely better to do what I do and use the auto splitter rather than trying to use the game time to tell you how you're doing because it's not very accurate. So when we come out of the pipe, on the route we are doing here, we are going to jump up, get that coin, stomp the Goomba, and then die into the other Goomba. Again, I think this is the most consistent route. It is not the absolute fastest route through Mario. The faster routes will score 10,300 points, but those routes, as far as I can tell, are slower in Tetris. And there's a few other ways that I am exploring on this part to make it faster that involve not getting this coin at all and just immediately dying. Now here comes the first big trick of Mario is that these death screens have frame rules. So it only matters so much how fast you go. If you don't get to the bus in time, you're not catching the bus. That's why this run was able to have a good Mario time without nailing the jumps in the pipe because the couple of frames we lost hitting those bricks lost less time than an entire frame rule. So we take that death because that's going to spawn us in a place where we can collect a whole bunch of coins. We don't want to go into World 1-2. It's much slower. We just want to die here and hit this screen. And then that's going to spawn us where we can get another 14 coins really quickly and rinse and repeat. So here, when we hit this pit, we want to jump across it as short as we can. And then we want to jump up onto that brick with as low of a jump as possible. And then try to jump up into the question mark block up above, falling down from the question mark block. We want to land on a Goomba, land under that brick and start hitting that brick because it's got at least 10 coins in it. We're going to try to get 11. You have to jump on these a little earlier than you think because we're going to try to get 11 coins. 
not only do we want the 11 coins, we just want to get done with the brick as quickly as possible. And you have to jump a little earlier than you think. So don't wait for Mario to hit the ground. Now on the last jump, this is a little bit tricky, but you want to, you don't want to be directly centered under the block. You want to be a little to the left. And when you go up for the last jump, you want to start pulling to the right so that when you hit the ground, Mario's already got some momentum and then he takes like one step and he's already running by the time he's flying over that Koopa. The other thing you need to note in this area is you need to get the Koopa to spawn and start walking to you when you're hitting the 10 coin block. If you don't, if he doesn't start walking towards you, then when you run right, he's gonna spawn in the way of getting the next few coins and it's gonna kill the run. Then you're gonna come over to the right here, you're gonna grab two more coins, you're gonna die again, which is gonna put us back in a loop. And we got 14 coins that life, so we need 14 more, so we're just gonna rinse and repeat. So again, after the death, we've got another frame rule right here. And then after we spawn from this death, there's no more frame rule. So we no longer have that grace period of if we're a little slow, okay, it doesn't matter because we're all getting on the bus at the same time. No, here every frame finally starts to matter. So same pattern, jump up, kill a Goomba, get the 10 coins out of the block, try to keep those jumps as short and abbreviated as possible. Try to start moving at the end of your jump so that you can get over the Koopa at full speed grab two coins, and that's the end of the Mario section. So this is a pretty good Mario time. It's a 47.76 in this run. That, the world record is just sub 47, and my best Mario time is like a 47.10, but that involves getting 10,300 or 10,200 points, which is going to give us a pattern in Tetris, which, as far as I have found, is going to be slower than saving that amount of time in Mario. Second game is Rad Racer. We have to complete the race. Effectively, Rad Racer is an auto scroll because once you hit max speed, you never have to break. So it's actually really easy comparatively to get a perfect time in Rad Racer. And in my opinion, it's the easiest of the three games, just period. Notwithstanding that I botched it in the middle of a marathon run, but that's what marathons are for, botching things. All right, so at the beginning, uh, just start by holding up an A while you're waiting for the countdown and you can hold left as well. You're gonna wanna get in the left lane. You need to hold A to accelerate and then up is gonna help you accelerate faster. And that's gonna cause this screen to do this little vibration effect, but keep holding up and A until your speed reaches 255 kilometers an hour and stay in the left lane. If you stay in the left lane, that car just gets out of your way. Once you hit 255, you can let go of up. You don't have to hold up anymore and that'll make it easier to maneuver. So just keep holding A. So the first turn is gonna to be to the left and it's not a very difficult turn. So I'm just kind of tapping on the left button so that I don't overturn. And then we're gonna get out of the way of the car on the right. And we're gonna get back into the left lane. And we're gonna stay in the left lane. Once we get past these cars, we have a left, right, left turn coming up. And you don't wanna overdo these turns because if you turn too early on the first left, you are too far to the left when the right turn comes up and you run at risk of falling back off the left. So you actually wanna go easy on these turns and kind of let yourself slide out a little bit as you see I'm doing here, left, right, left. And then you're gonna to wanna to go to the right of this car as he slides from the right lane to the middle lane and then get back in the middle lane. Here you're gonna see a car going much more slowly than you in the middle lane, but the car will get out of your lane and go to the right lane. So just stay in the middle lane and let him get out of your way. We've got another turn coming up to the left. What you can do is when you see these red signs, you can count out three red signs and that's about when you should start turning is when you get past this third red sign. And this turn's not too bad, but you do need to watch out and get out of the right lane so you don't hit that car, kind of park in the middle. And there's an immediate right turn here, and you're gonna slide just a little bit to the left while you make that turn. But if you're somewhere in the middle, you should be perfectly fine. Now we're gonna have a big left turn coming up, uh, but you don't need to overdo this one because there's gonna be a car in your way if you do. But I'm gonna get in the left lane. We're gonna see these red signs come up again. You can start turning as early as, again, the third sign. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna watch out. There's gonna be this car coming up in the middle lane up here. So you're gonna need to back off your left turn so you don't hit this car but you're gonna to need to be very careful about it because as soon as you get past this car, you're gonna to need to slam on going to the left again. So you're gonna see me here back off a little bit, pass him and then slam on the left again as soon as I'm past him. And here you're gonna to wanna to get your left tire at least to the leftmost white line. You can get as far as having half your car over that line, but if you get your left tire to that white line, you will succeed in this turn every time. Okay, get back in the center because there's gonna be a car on the right, then a car on the left. Once the car on the left is gone, get over to the left. And this is the place where I have the hardest time doing the visual cue, because we don't have the green and the red signs, it's all the red signs. You do want to, uh, again, kind of watch those red signs and try to count them out. 
to make this turn because there's like six of them. So probably the fifth one is when you want to go. This turn, if you are too slow, you can hit the dirt. If you're worried about hitting the dirt at any point during this, hold up so that you can get that acceleration back on. You can hit the dirt a little bit and you might not even lose a whole frame out of it. I wouldn't worry too much if you hit a little bit of dirt on one of these. What you don't want to do is hit a sign on the side of the road. That will kill the run unless it's the one time when you need to do it. As you can see, we made it without hitting the dirt there, so we center back up, and then we're gonna stay in the center here. This is the hardest turn of the entire race by a lot, and you might wanna save state practice this one a bit. So there's gonna be a car on the left, car on the right. Once we get past the car on the right, we're gonna get into the right lane and try to get relatively centered in the right lane. Then we're gonna watch for the signs on the right, and we're gonna count out three signs, and when we get the third sign, we are gonna turn hard to the right and it's, the visual cue is not exact so it's it depends on exactly where you how centered you get in the lane and your own reaction time but it's the general visual cue of the third green sign slam it to the right you're going to get into the uh the warning track here and then your car will start sliding back over to the left and if you hit the dirt at the beginning of the turn, that's okay. Just hold up to get your acceleration back. If you feel like your tires do not get this far into the warning track, there's a chance that you might hit a sign on the left side of the road. So hold up in case you hit the dirt, but also brace yourself for the reset. There isn't really much you can do to slow down and save it. You just, just brace yourself for the reset if you miss this turn. So this in this run, this is the record run, so we obviously make it. Now set yourself in the left lane, and now the turn's gonna go the other direction. You're just kinda gonna wanna stay in this lane, just doing these light little taps to hold the lane. And then here, once you get through that turn, see there's a car on the left, and in the distance there's a car on the right lane. So you're gonna need to make a big left turn here as the road turns left and you're gonna start drifting to the right And you need to drift between those two cars This one's also a little tricky and it does look like you're gonna hit the car on the right You can hit the car on the right, but it's not gonna happen as easily as it looks Okay, now that that's done. We have one more trick get in the right lane You're gonna need to crash into a tree when the score says 60 60 So what I do is I stare at my score until it's at 6,000. So once it's at 6,000, we have the 5950 here. We see three more trees. That's 6,000. Then I look up. Then I count out the third tree and the next cluster of trees, and I hit the third tree. So one, two, over. And then this lets us crash across the finish line. Because in Rad Racer, if you drive across the finish line, the car will apply the brakes and slow down. If you crash across the finish line, you've done all that slowing down on the course. So you just stop and you move on to Tetris. Now there's a little bit for me to talk about with Tetris. I can't like tell you, oh, here's the route. The, the way for you to learn my route is to watch my video and make notes of it and practice exactly what I do. What I'm doing in Tetris, I cannot guarantee it's optimal in terms of time, but it is optimal in terms of number of pieces. So this will get us through Tetris 25 lines in the minimum 63 pieces. The route was not optimized for this, but it turns out this route is also very efficient when it comes to DAS delays. So in Tetris, DAS is delayed auto shift, which is the pieces moving over one space per frame when you're holding left or right, but there's, it's delayed auto shift. So you have to hold it for a bit. First one will do a tap, then it will wait a second, then it will start sliding. It turns out if you use DAS to slide a piece over and then you drop it and then you start holding DAS for the next piece, the next piece will have the DAS delay already done so it'll just start moving. Whereas if you start tapping a piece and then drop it, the next piece generally won't have that DAS delay. So my recommendation on Tetris is to try to chain together as many DAS moves as you can and get better at making short DAS moves. I know that I have trouble doing DAS moves of two spaces and one space is like that straight out, that's a tap. We're gonna try to chain the DAS moves together so that either we're sliding, 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 sliding a series of pieces or we're tapping a few pieces into place to get them in the center while we're waiting to work on the sides. The actual specifics of my route is just watch my video and mimic it. There's not really much to say about it, except there's a few places in here that I probably wanna call special attention to, but we are going to try to build up the stack as high as we can and then clear lines with I-beams. We need 25 lines, which is six Tetrises and one other single, or really it's seven clears. We wanna minimize the number of clears we do too, because that also takes time. There is a line clear delay. So this is all of, this build is all about minimizing the amount of time we're not doing stuff. And it does take about half a second on average to drop a piece. 
So as you can see here, we, we spend a lot of time building up the stack and we build it relatively high. And there are some unintuitive moves in here because the RNG is fixed so we can do that. There's a few, there's like one point in here I wanna call out, but anytime you're moving a piece one, I'm tapping, anytime I'm moving it two, I'm trying DAS, which as you can see, there was a spot at around 12 lines where I made a mistake and we had to do a second tap, which lost some time. There is one point I wanna call out here with the Z piece near 16. This is three spaces over, but it comes between two tapping pieces. So this piece is probably better to tap than to S, or at least it's pretty close. This is the place at 16 lines is where we get our single line. And then towards the end, you will see that all we have left over is two blocks and this is the minimum we can do. So there were a few, there were definitely a few Tetris mistakes in this run. Tetris does take a lot of practice and it is the place where there's the most time to save. And there may be better routes. There may be routes that do a better job of building up the sides and then building up the center while wasting fewer pieces. It may actually turn out that it is better to not clear every piece on this and not bring the stack to the bottom. It might actually be better to work higher up or to build a platform, uh, to build, spend three or four pieces building a platform and then never bring it that low again. Uh, I can't promise those don't exist, but uh, you'll have to do that research on your own if you're gonna try to push this to 414 or lower.